Hi everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and in this video, I'm gonna show you four ways that you can work with patterns in the Silhouette Studio software. Some of these are easier ways to work with than others, and some will take up less space in your Silhouette library. We're going to discuss all the different options and what you can do for your projects. Patterns can be so much fun to play around with, and there are so many different options that you can do and projects that you can add a unique look to with the different patterns. So let's take a look at how we can work with those. Now in the Silhouette Studio software, we are currently on the design tab. I'm going to jump over into the library tab and show you where patterns are stored. If you purchase patterns from the Silhouette Design Store and the library is syncing correctly, then you can notice there is a patterns folder in the Silhouette library, in this library tree on the left-hand side. If the library and the design store are talking correctly, patterns that you purchase in the Silhouette design store should sync and load into this folder. Patterns that are loaded automatically from the Silhouette design store do not count as your store against your storage in the Silhouette library. If you bring in a pattern, you do need the designer edition upgrade or higher in order to add your own patterns to the library. If you bring in your own pattern into the Silhouette library, that does count against your cloud storage. Users are limited in the cloud storage and that depends on the actual user and your account. All users get one gigabyte of storage space. Pattern files are JPEG, PNG, or TIFF, TIFF files. These are photo files and they do take up a large amount of space. When you are working with a pattern file that would be for print quality, it needs to be 300 DPI, which means that those files can be very large files. So we are going to take a look at that. One way that you can tell the file size is you can come down to the bottom right corner of your Silhouette library and you can click on this little list icon. It's going to now change all of my files. I'm currently in the patterns folder and it's going to show me the actual size of these patterns. So I can come down here and I can see that some of these files, they vary in the different sizes. Now, files that come in from the Silhouette Design Store do not count against that cloud storage, so the file size is not as important as if you are bringing in a file from outside. I'm gonna show you how I work with the patterns when they are coming in from outside of the Silhouette software. I highly recommend that you do not get crazy adding your own patterns into the Silhouette Studio software. It will quickly eat up your storage space. Now you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner of my library, I do have five gigabytes of space. That is because I have a Silhouette Design Store subscription. With a Silhouette Design Store subscription or a Silhouette Club subscription, you do get extra storage in the Silhouette library, but patterns can very quickly eat that up. So I wanna make sure that you understand how that works. So I'm going to come back to the right-hand side and click on this little four squares. That's going to bring up my thumbnail images again. So you can see that I have quite a few patterns and most of those are from the Silhouette Design Store. So one way that you can work with your patterns is simply to select them from the library. So I'm just going to double click on this just like I would any other design. It's going to open onto my design map. It does open larger, which is just fine. You would rather have a pattern file open larger then smaller. If I come out here and zoom out, you can see that this pattern is 18.9 inches by 18.9 inches. That is just fine. I would not be concerned about a file opening too large when it comes down to a pattern that would be used for print. This is great for print quality. Now at this size, it does give me the low resolution. That is just fine because I'm not going to be printing this at the 18 inches. I'm gonna come up here and I'm simply going to change this to 12 inches. It's going to bring it down to the size of my current mat and I'm going to choose fit to window. Oh, and then I'm gonna choose center to page. 
So then it's going to center that right onto that page. Now you'll notice that my print quality uh, low resolution disappeared because it is now at the size that is okay to print at. This is a high quality image for this size print. So that is one way you can do that. I'm gonna open a new design tab here. I'm gonna show you another example. I'm simply going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to click on the library tab and then I'm going to click one time on the alcohol ink pattern, same pattern that I used before. And then I can come back to my design tab. And what you'll notice is that the design, the rectangle that was selected is now filled with that pattern. If I double clicked, it's going to open. I'll show you that here on the design page, just like I had before. Single click brings it in on the rectangle that was selected. Double click brings in the full size pattern going to delete that one. So we have now covered the first way that you could work with patterns. Those are if it is in your patterns folder on your silhouette library. So that's one way. The other way that you can work with patterns is to come over to the fill panel on the right hand side, click on the third tab at the top, the fill pattern. And this is going to take some time probably to open. I've been working in my software with fill patterns, so it opened rather quickly. But since I have over a thousand patterns in my patterns folder, the first time that I open it fresh in the Silhouette Studio software, it does take a few seconds to load. It is loading all of those patterns into this fill panel here. You can see all of those, that thumbnail is very, very small. So it can be a little bit more difficult to work with, but you can simply select your pattern here. With the rectangle selected, I'm going to click on a pattern and it's going to change to that pattern. I can continue clicking on different patterns to see what I would like to choose. So I have a lot of different options here. So that is the second way that you can work with your pattern fills. The third way that you can work with pattern fills is to come down here to the show hide library and we are going to do what's called a split screen. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to slide this little, when I first open this, let's click back on the patterns. When I first open this, it's usually over here. So you can simply use the double arrow once you move your cursor over it and get that and then just slide it over so you can see just a little bit better. I'm going to close this fill panel here and then I can see I'm in my patterns folder and I can see the different options that I have for a pattern fill. So I'm just going to simply with my rectangle selected, simply click on alcohol wash and that adds that pattern to the rectangle that is selected. Now, if I were to come down here and choose this pattern and double click, it's going to open that pattern, single click, filled the rectangle that was selected, double click, opened that pattern. I'm gonna simply click undo or control Z. So there I have my pattern has filled inside of that rectangle with the click. If I choose this one over here, same thing, it's going to change to that pattern. So that's another way. This is probably my second favorite way to use the pattern fills because I can see these icons a little bit bigger. You can even make them larger than what I have here shown at the very bottom of your library, even in the split panel, there is a little slider and you can increase the size of those thumbnails. So you are able to see those. Now, once the size of the thumbnail is increased, you will see less on the little shared screen here. But the same is true for if you click on the library tab at the top, I'm gonna close this here and then click on the library tab. At the very bottom, you'll see that slider again and you can increase the size of your thumbnails here. That can be very helpful in being able to see those patterns. This one here looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna single click on that one, come back to my design tab and there I have that pattern in my rectangle. Now, a fourth way to use patterns in the Silhouette Studio software is probably my favorite way, and it is the easiest, I think, to work with once you start working with a lot of patterns. So we're going to use a method that's called the drag and drop method. Now, this is for files that are saved on your computer, and it will work for both Windows and Mac computers. 
So what I'm going to do is I have my rectangle selected here on the screen. I am going to pull in my Windows folder. This is a file that is from the Silhouette De Design Store by Sarah Hurley. It is a pattern and I have direct downloaded that file to my computer. You can use digital patterns from anywhere, the Silhouette Design Store and other locations. So I'm just using this one as a specific example. I have it saved to my computer's hard drive. And what I'm going to do is I am simply going to drag, grab this file, left click, drag it and drop it onto the rectangle. Now you wanna make sure to hold your left mouse button down until the pattern has filled the rectangle. If you move too fast, that little white rectangle that you saw in the middle of the pattern will stay there and it will not disappear. The only way to make it disappear is to close the software and reopen the software. You need to go slow and make sure that pattern fills it. So I'm gonna hit Control Z here. We're gonna go back to this pattern and I'll show you one more time. So I'm gonna come over here to my files folder. This is where it's saved. I'm going to left click, drag and drop that little square rectangle. If you go too fast, it's going to stay there. I'm going to left click and drop that as soon as the pattern has filled inside of that rectangle. Now, one more thing that I wanna show you here is I'm going to come over to the library and I talked about file size here. I want to show you when I bring a file into the Silhouette library, you can add patterns to the library, but it does use up your cloud storage. So if I open this folder again, the easiest way to add files into the Silhouette Design Store Patterns folder is simply to left click on it and drag and drop it. I have the best results if I left click and I drag it to the Patterns folder specifically and then I drop it in. If I try to drop it in, let's go back to the thumbnail version. If I try to drop it in directly into the thumbnails into this section in the middle here, it does not always work. So I have the best success when it loads into, when I drag it into the patterns folder on the library tree on the left. Now we just need to find that file. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm going to, it's D, let's see if that's what it's named at. Um, let's see here, patterns, A to Z. I should just be able to scroll down and see if it's under D. And here is that pattern. So now what I wanna show is I want to compare the size of this file. So this was the direct download from the Silhouette Studio software. I'm going to click on the little list icon and then I will have to go back down here to the D's, find that real quick. D373392. So here is the file size and in this case this one is not uh, any, like, it's not any larger than some of these others that have come into the software. So you want to keep in mind that those patterns can be very large files. So when you are adding patterns to your library, that is something to be very careful and very mindful of. You'll also notice that the properties do not come in because it was a file that was direct downloaded and those are not information that is in a direct download file. So when I add that in there, it's not going to tell me who it's from or have it as listed as a printable pattern. It just has it listed as the file type and the size. So I'm gonna come back over here. It would work the same way. If I come back up and find that file again, I'm going to Find it here. If I double click, it's going to add that file to my mat. And in this case, it opens at 28 inches because it is the original file. It is not the file size that was submitted to Silhouette for them to sync to the library. So it is 28 inches square. Now, I can simply resize this and I would just come up here. You can use the 
automatic resize here that you can resize by percentages. That brings it down to almost the 12 by 12, not quite, so 12 inches. Once I put it back down to the 12 inches, there we go. I do still have this. This might disappear in just a second once the Silhouette software has had time to process that data. So you wanna keep that in mind when you are working with the files and especially with printable patterns. Now, I hope those tips have helped to get started and to work with your pattern fills in the Silhouette Studio software. Please check out the links in the description below for additional information. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.